Good morning everyone, how are you today on Friday? I'm going to swap things around a tiny bit and uh, if you could let me know if you can hear me and if you can see me on Facebook by posting a little comment or sending a like. In the meantime I'm going to go live on Instagram as well and uh, last time what I did I tried to go first live with Instagram then Facebook waited a little bit and I'm just uh, thinking that maybe today it will go a bit better and you will have more time to tell me if you can hear me or not. So let's try the Instagram and hello and welcome to the Instagram live. So I'm going to put the phone here. The Facebook's going to be here so I'm going to talk to both of you. Um, to anyone who's here today for the first time, my name is Susanna and I'm a harpist and a harp teacher. I'm based in Edinburgh, Scotland. And this is my new series of uh, live harp lessons, mini harp lessons, mini harp performances maybe even. And this is the third episode, if I remember correctly. Um, maybe just to explain what it actually is, um, I've decided that I would like to make more recordings of pieces from intermediate slash beginner harp repertoire to become known and available. And mainly for the students to know what's possible to play on the harp and um, that's why I thought that um, also a good idea would be to play them live so you can ask any questions and tell me you have any problems learning any, any of the pieces so it's a bit more interactive just like it would be in a, in a mini harp lesson. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook or on Instagram send me a comment just to tell me that the sound quality and the image are all fine. I wouldn't want to explain everything and even maybe start playing and uh, thinking that nobody nobody can hear me. So just to check that everything is fine. Um, and maybe in the meantime I will also share with you something that I promised I will share, which is news um, about the new addition to the Heart family. So just let me get the new baby. And here she is. Let me just try to get her between her big sisters. So um, maybe I'll show it to you like that. So that's a model uh, Adventurer 20 from Derwent Harps. Maybe it's more presentable from this angle. So it's 20 strings harp with no levers as you can see so at the moment it's tuned in um, in C major but you can tune it into any other key and I bought this harp maybe I'll just hold it like that I bought this harp inspired by Kezaya Thomas and her brilliant new initiative um, Little Harp Social if you don't know Kezaya or a Little Harp Social go and check them out on Instagram or on Facebook um, it's a group course, harp course for adults, meeting every week and um, playing the harps and Kezaya together with her course is providing a harp so she bought quite a few of these adventure harps. <laughs> Actually you're a bit too big for the for the screen so maybe I'll keep you here like that. And when I saw that I thought well this is brilliant especially when I saw the price of the harp. Uh, this model costed exactly £199 so compared to any liver harp which can be anything between 1500 to 8000 pounds or a pedal harp which starts like from 8000 pounds and go, can go up to 50,000 or even more. So compared to this, this is really an um, affordable way of starting to play and I just wanted to, to see how it works and what can be done with this. And also I've never really had an occasion to play um, on a lap harp, a harp which is being held on your, on your lap, as you, as you would, uh, would imagine. So I just wanted to see how can I make it work, how can I advise students who would like to come and learn to play on this harp. Um, so I'm just interested to hear how many of you do play a lap harp or how many of you have students who play on smaller harps like that. Would you be interested to hear more repertoire for smaller size of the harps? Because most of the things I've been playing here so far are mm, designed for liver harp or pedal harp, probably something around 34 strings like this harp. But I know that there are quite a few students who have smaller harps and, um, and from what I see, 
most of the repertoire doesn't um, Mm, does call for bigger herbs, and I just was wondering if anyone else has this has this problem with um, finding pieces for for smaller herbs. Let me just see your comments. Let me put the herb away and let me see your comments. Uh, is there anyone who would like to tell me if everything is working on Facebook and Instagram? Hey, I can see you all joining in. If you can just wave at me or tell me that everything is working that would be really good okay so i'm going to continue to the piece for today i've tried to put the title and the name of the composer in the title of the facebook live and for instagram i i'm not sure how how I will be able to do this, but if you want to show the title of the piece and see how it's written, just send me a, pri a private message. The composer is a Polish lady, Janina Garścia, so that will be something from my homeland today. Uh, Janina Garścia is a, was a pianist and a piano teacher. She died uh, in 2004. For most of her life she lived, for all of her life, she lived in Krakow and she worked there as a piano teacher and composer and she composed many works for solo piano so many many generations of pianists including me at one point have been playing pieces by her at one point or another but uh, in 2003 just just before she died actually she um, she um, started to compose those pieces for the harps they were inspired i think and dedicated to uh, Anna Filochowska, who was, um, who still is a brilliant violinist, and at that time she used to play violin and harp as well. And that uh, set of pieces for the harp that I'm going to play from today was uh, dedicated and written for her. And the set of pieces is called On the Harp Strings, that's how it was translated to English. In Polish that's uh, Na Strunach Harpy. And um, I will post a link later to the shop where you can buy the music. The um, book that I have is selection of the pieces. I know that there are some pieces not only for solo harp, but also for flute and harp, for violin and harp. And that I suppose can be found in, in another book uh, that I don't have access to. But I will post the link to the one I have. It contains about 10 pieces of various difficulties, starting from very easy pieces for someone who's just starting to play the harp to some a bit more ambitious, around grade 5, I would say. Today's piece is called Rope Walking, in Polish, Spacer Polinie, and I would say that this one is about grade 4 or 5 difficulty level, so I would say you would need to play for about at least three years and having regular lessons and uh, practicing regularly for about three years because there are some technical challenges um, that I will be speaking later after playing this piece. So to anyone who's joined now, I'm just checking if there are any questions at all. And for anyone who joined now, this is uh, Rope Walking by Janina Garścia for Solo Harp.
Sorry for uh, the noise about the end. I forgot to uh, remove my ring, but I uh, hope you uh, you still enjoyed it. So a uh, few words about this piece. If you have any questions at any point, just write them in the comments and I'll be checking them every now and then to, to answer. So uh, the difficulties in this piece, I would say, is uh, the patterns of the left hand, because sometimes we're getting actually really big chords like uh, this one here. We've got A and E, which is a fifth, then a fourth, then we're getting the thumb so that's quite a big pattern and many people especially young players may not be able to put all the fingers on the strings even i which uh, personally i have a really short fingers i think compared to other people what i usually do uh, is consciously or not consciously consciously i put fourth and third finger because these are the ones who are starting i play the fourth finger and then when i move second and the thumb they are already in much more friendly position of uh, here, second inversion. So, so that's something you can do when you practice playing that piece. Practice placing only third and fourth finger, playing third, then rolling over on the third finger and getting yourself in the position to play the other three notes. That will be the same for the other bar, which looks like that, where there is three, four, and then putting second and the thumb there for the, for the other bar. Uh, then coming from that, if you want to make your left hand really solid, I would look at the patterns, not think of them as uh, one single note at once, so G, B, D, E, but thinking of that as a whole chord and thinking what kind of pattern do we have here. So with this first chord in the left hand, we've got a root position of G major chord, and then we've got one more string added a step higher, so we've got four fingers in this pattern. It's very good to practice them like that, played as chords, so you can really see which fingers are closer together, which ones are further away. In this case, it's thumb and second finger being close. Then we're moving down to the next chord, and here we've got third and fourth finger close together, and then the basic position of uh, the chord with each string skipping higher. And um, I know that for people who are new to harp and ring the music, it might be hard to spot at first, but it's important that you realize that these are actually the same notes. We've got G, B, D, E first, and then we've got G, B, D, E as well, just in different configurations. But our fingers third and fourth, with, which have lay earlier been on G and B, are now moving, uh, are now uh, being replaced by second finger and the thumb, and everything is moving just a bit further down. So if you kind of imagine that those strings are the ones you need to aim for, that will be much easier. And I would practice the, the whole of the first part of the piece like that, with placing whichever fingers you need to put for a whole bar, even if it's a different pattern, with a turn, I would still try to place all three fingers so you're uh, already thinking what kind of pattern is happening in a bar. So that's about the left hand. I'll just check quickly if you have any questions as to what I said so far. I don't think any questions on Facebook but on Instagram. Uh, that was really beautiful, says Matviev Harptula. Thank you very much. Thank you for your lovely comments. And uh, let's move on. So that first part I would definitely recommend practicing left hand separately, right hand separately. Right hand is a tiny bit maybe easier than the left hand, but it's important that you write in and uh, practice the fingerings that you are going to use and being really caref careful about directional placing. So only placing the fingers that go in the same direction together. There are quite a few opportunities to go a bit wrong here, so um, try thinking again about which fingers go up, which fingers go down, right in the lines in your music, because here we've got only a few indications, so if you're in depth, just write everything in, as you would be doing, and then uh, practice what's written. Try not to do something um, spontaneously <laughs> when, you're, when you're playing that, just try to really practice what's uh, on the page. And then I um, just need to flip my, my notes to the other side so I remember everything I was going to say. Um, right hand has um, a few patterns that you have heard the rolled chords going like that. And I heard, and you heard me playing them spread, which means playing one up 
after the other. When you're practicing that piece for the first time, I would recommend playing them straight, so like that, as opposed to rolled, which is... Because then uh, you are going to make sure that you will get them exactly where you want them, on the second beat of the bar or first beat of the bar, depending on the chord. So making sure that they are all very rhythmic. And also you will get used to placing all your fingers at once, as opposed to having four, three, two, one. That's going to delay you and uh, may possibly confuse you and, and the left hand as well. So just start by not adding too much of the, um, if I may say so, effects to, the, to your playing. Just try to see where your fingers need to be at any given moment. And same for the middle beat. Middle beat actually asks for some of those chords to be straight and some to be rolled. practice all of them straight for now, just so you are sure of the rhythm and you are sure of the notes that are playing. There is one interesting instance of playing uh, two chords, uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then one chord with just two fingers on. And here you may either choose, what I do is having a third and second finger on, which might feel a bit strange, but I think it works a bit better than trying to swap to the second finger and the thumb but you may just want to choose how fast you want to play this piece and whether you have time to do this, the swap to the second finger and the thumb, or do you prefer to have uh, the same fingers going to the same strings like that? That's up to you. Just checking if I've got anything else in my notes. I think uh, that's mostly it. One um, tip which is not specific for this piece but I think that might help you in general when you will be working on dynamics that piece has quite uh, well uh, divided contrast between piano parts and loud parts for example here we've got this nice echo effect I'm going to play that to you first loud then soft how well Facebook will render that, but I'm also recording audio separately, so you can rewatch it later and uh, hear the difference. Uh, it's sometimes quite hard to make the transition so sudden, so what I do, I take a tiny, tiny bit of break, especially f f since with the harp that loud sound will carry on for a while. So I just leave a little space for that loudness to go away a tiny bit so we can hear the first note of the quiet bit. I'll try to demonstrate that to you now. That's one way to do it, which I think works works quite well. And it's not really breaking anything in the rhythm. It's just as if you were taking a breath between saying something something really exciting. And uh, it's not supposed to be too long, but just enough for the audience to realize that you're actually going to say something in a in a quieter voice. That's it from the piece. Tell me if you have any questions. Tell me if you like it. I'm just going to quickly check the comments. Uh, from you. Just some thumbs up. Thank you very much for that. Um, in more news, if you would like to hear me play live and you're in Scotland today or tomorrow, I'm going to perform in the Usher Hall with the Roy Royal Scottish National Orchestra tonight. We are going to play Mother 6, which is a very exciting piece to play. And tomorrow we are going to repeat the concert in Glasgow. If you're not around but would still like to listen, you can uh, tune in on BBC Radio 3, the concert will be, uh, will be also played there, so that's another option. And I will see you here next week with another piece, and also a call for you. If there are any pieces that you are learning at the moment and you're struggling with any aspect, or if there are any pieces that you would like to learn and would like to see me teaching them, just let me know. I'm always happy to, to hear about new things. I've got a whole list of pieces that I would like to go through, but I'm curious to see what pieces are um, your dream pieces and uh, if there's anything that you would like to hear or learn about playing the harp. That's it for today. And I'm going to see you uh, a week from today. Thanks for coming. Bye.